Hi everyone, welcome back. So we are gonna be doing my favorite thing, which is Am I the A-Hole series. So if you do not know what we do, I have an entire playlist on my YouTube channel where we go through and do this. But basically, we go onto this subreddit, which is called r slash am I the a-hole, and it is a bunch of people who tell stories of their lives, and they want to know if they are the person in the wrong or not. So we're going to go through a couple of these, and we're going to give our opinions of it. This is literally my favorite thing to do on my channel, um, and I know a lot of people on YouTube enjoy it. I know a lot of people on the Twitch streams enjoy it. So let's get into it. All right, so we're going to do this first one that's just calling out to me. Am I the a-hole for leaving my niece's wedding reception early and taking my gift back? What do we think? Just on a baseline, if we had to predict, what do we think, chat? What do we think already? I'm gonna say no. So, oh, by the way, I forgot to do this. So there's a-hole, not the a-hole, everyone sucks, no a-holes here. For context. Okay, people are saying not the a-hole. Okay, alright. So we're kind of in agreement on that thus far. So... Let me read it out. Let me read it out. Let me read it out. Oh, my screen. Um, so, I'm 45 male and I have a niece who is 22 and just got married last weekend. The family is blowing up with drama right now. Oh, I love it. Give me family drama. Give me family drama. Give me family drama. Um, our family is blowing up with drama right now because of what I and my wife did. I must preface this by saying that my family can be pushovers. They really all hate conflict and will, okay, why are they all in drama then? And will definitely let themselves be run over by someone else in order to not cause a fight. However, I am not like this way. Okay, work. So that's them. The wedding was on Saturday, Catholic ceremony in a church that was at 3.30 p.m., not 3.25 p.m., 3.30 p.m. The reception area was at a brewery about 15 minutes from the church. The reception was set to start at 5. Maybe this was stupid on the venue, people, but they wouldn't open the bar or bring around the appetizers until the bride and groom had arrived. Service ended around 4.30, and everyone was told to go to the reception. The wedding party had a limo to take them, and a separate limo took the parents, grandparents, siblings, etc. The grip is young and decided against family in the wedding party, lol. Okay. I was, or it was four sorority sisters and fraternity brothers on each side. Okay. I mean, I guess that's a very, like, modern thing. Having your frat bros, your frat bros, being the ones that walk you down the aisle, your sorority sisters. Woo! It sounds like hell. That over your family? Okay. All right. Frat bros for life. Interesting. All right. To each their own. My wife and I drove. We got to the venue around 4.50 with the first family limo arriving around that time. By 5, I'd say all 150 guests were there. Is that big or small for a wedding? Is that big or small for a wedding, 150 people? Or is that like a decent size? What is it? 150 people. Pretty big, small, medium. Okay, people, three people saying, <laughs> three people saying different answers. People are saying it's medium-ish. Pretty normal. Okay. We're there. But there was the no bride and no grim. Uh, the wedding uh, coordinator was getting pretty pissed as it was now 5.55 or 5.45, 5.45, hello, and no wedding party yet. Uh, we were all just standing around with no food and no drinks. Well, that's very annoying. Someone was able to get a hold of the mother-in-law around this point, and apparently the bride and groom told the limo driver to stop at a liquor store and then drive around on the highway for an hour or so while the wedding um, party could get trashed. Wait, so they were waiting, they thought that they were going to go to a liquor store, get drunk, and then come back after being drunk, whereas all the other guests weren't allowed to eat or drink until the bride and groom arrived. Okay, this is already not the a-hole. The bride and groom are the a-holes. At around six, the mother-in-law said they should be arriving in the next 20 minutes or so. My wife and I looked at each other and said, we're out. To be fair, I would leave too. I'm going to be honest, I would leave too. Is that too harsh? We thought it was horribly disrespectful for them to do this to all of their guests. I told my uh, brother and uh, father-in-law, or F FOB, what is FOB? I told my brother, FOB, father of brother, is that right? Father of bride, oh, that makes more sense. Um, That we were leaving and taking the gift with us. Okay, I think taking the gift with you is a little bit, like, just... It's patty. I feel that, like, leaving is fine, but taking the gift is just, like, 
you know what I mean? It's unnecessary. I mean, it's annoying what they did, but, like, leaving is a pretty much... They shouldn't take the gift egregiously. You know what I mean? Leave the gift. You can go. Explain yourself. And then everything should be fine. I mean, they kind of cause drama by taking the gift as well. I'm gonna be honest. All right. Um, we said we were leaving and taking the gift with us. He tried to plead by saying that they're just kids. Let them have fun. But I was having none of it. So this person's 45 and the niece is 22. A few days later, I got an apology text from the niece followed by an ask for the gift. Oh, they like flat out were like, give us the gift, please. Give us the gift, please. I said that I felt very disrespected and I didn't want to give a gift anymore. She snapped and called me an a-hole. Okay. Okay. You know, okay. This one, the, the wedding party getting drunk and leaving their guests without food and stuff like that is so annoying. What's also... And I would have laughed. I'm going to be honest. I would have laughed. Taking the gift is just, like, looking for drama. I'm going to be honest. Like, it's looking for drama. However, the niece calling up and asking for the gift is also, like, initiating drama. However, they literally bought the gift, so now they just have a wedding gift sitting. So, of course, she's going to, like, try ask for it. She's also young. I just think that, like, I think that this person is not the a-hole overall. But I feel that, like, you're doing the most by taking the wedding gift as well. You're, like, trying to make too big a point. Just leave. Just leave. It's not about the gift. It's about the principal. I'm aware. I know. It just comes across as, like, really petty to me. I'm going to say not the a-hole, but, like, a little bit of, like, you're all kind of pissing me off. You're all kind of pissing me off. All right. Let's get to the next one. Um... Hmm. Am I the a-hole for not wanting to split my jackpot win with my husband's friend? What do we think? Just, just on a baseline, what do we think? Oh my god, Penny University. I love Swip. Okay, everyone's saying not the a-hole. I, female, 30, played the lottery for the first time last year, um, when everyone was talking about the Powerball jackpot. Um, since then, I've played casually, only spending a few dollars a week. I occasionally won a few bucks and never really expected to win anything big. But it was nice, um, but it was a nice to dream as I had a lot of debt and had been struggling a lot. So I'm going to spend more of that on, um, scratch cards, put myself further in debt. Fast forward to a few months ago. I won't say the month for privacy. Ooh, okay. I checked the winning numbers one night against my ticket. And it matched with my numbers perfectly. All right. Initially, I didn't believe it and thought that there... Can you imagine that moment? Can you imagine that moment? When you, like... I, I don't know how I would react. I didn't believe it and I thought there was a mistake. So I told my husband, male 35, and we checked it like a dozen times and I was right. We won. It's life-changing, multi-generational, fuck you money. Ooh. Okay. We instantly agreed to keep the news to ourselves and wait a few months before we did anything. I would be like this if I was sitting around people and I was like my family and I had like this. I would be like, is that not, how do you keep that in? Like if you just won millions of dollars, how do you not tell people that? I understand the reason for not telling them, but I'd be like this. Anyone else? I wouldn't tell. I would not tell anyone other than, like, my really close people, but I would still be, like, I'd be, like, needing to tell someone. All right, so we agreed to keep it ourselves. The past few months have been an incredible high filled with disbelief, and though it's been difficult, we have managed not to make any larger purchases or change our lifestyle. Oh, okay. I should have let them finish. We fantasize about what to do with the money, but the time to claim is drawing near, so we have begun having more practical discussions about how to claim and what to do with it. While discussing, my husband Adam... Whoa. Whoa. That was like in school when you'd be reading a math equation and it would be your name, or a name of someone in your class, and everyone would like turn around to look at them. Mary bought four bananas, and everyone would be like, Staring at Mary. Anyone else ever do that? So Adam brought up that he thinks it would be a good idea to split the money with his best friend, business partner, Tim. Okay. 
Tim and Adam have been... F hmm. No. No. She won the money. Why the fuck is the her husband's business partner getting all of it? Uh-uh. And how does Tim know that you have the money? Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh, sweetie, this is your money. This is your money. And this is what you said, multi-generational for your family. This is not for Tim. Tim and Adam have been friends since they were middle school. I do not care. He's not getting the money. Since they were in middle school and have done everything together. Except this. Except this. Not this. They've invested money. Okay, but not this money. Not this money. Together, they've started businesses, worked together, and they've dreamt about our families making it big together. Okay, well, we're not making it together. <laughs> Since we have uh, taken risks together and we are so close, Adam feels it's right to give them one third. What? One third? One third? So that, number one, we're not going on this journey to a new life alone. Oh, I'm going by myself! Are they married to Tim? Yeah, good point. That is crazy! Number two, it's suspicious to make all this money suddenly and more easily... Okay, they're, gonna, they're saying that it's much easier to give Tim a bunch of money than lie about the fact that they won a bunch of money. You're willing to give away one-thirds of your money rather than tell him you won? This is crazy! I promise you, Tim and Adam are fucking! They're fucking! <laughs> he holds some loyalty to Tim. They are fucking! I, however, feel like it's risky to share that we came into this money with them because Tim's family tend to be more flashy and show it off, and I don't fully trust. Okay, well, there's your answer. There's your answer. There is your answer. There's your answer. For them to keep it quiet and not raise suspicion. This is important because I've seen community members harass and attack people with far less money because they feel entitled. This could jeopardize our safety, so I would avoid it at all, you know, costs if possible. Also, I'm not really comfortable with his plan to add Tim and his wife as members of our LLC to claim it. They're not even giving it to them. They're adding them on. Oh, Tim and Adam are fucking. They're getting added onto the government list that's getting this money. Honey, he is gay. This is crazy. Adam thinks I'm being selfish and won't enjoy our new and that he won't enjoy our newfound wealth if his friend isn't living the same lifestyle as him. Oh, they're fucking. Yeah. Uh-huh. Denial is a river in Egypt. Your husband is gay. <laughs> Anyone know that Wendy Williams video? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Egypt, your husband is gay. <laughs> oh, wait, where's the original? The original's funnier. Denial is a river in Egypt. Why your is there music? husband is gay. <laughs> Me to this one. This is crazy. Am I the a hole for not wanting to tell him that for, for not wanting to tell him we won the lottery and not wanting to split the money? Is anyone saying that they think that they're... People are saying, call a family attorney, keep the money out of your husband's sole business. They have to be. They have to be. <gasps> Wait! Did, did I read that? The whole time I'm asking, are they in love and are they sleeping together? I was right on the case. Right on the case. 
Girl, your husband loves penis. Anyway, on to the next one. All right. Am I the a-hole for forcing my daughter to come to a family reunion instead of going with her boyfriend and his family on a trip? And the daughter is 17. What do we think? Oh, I'm getting a lot of... You are the a-hole. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the muckers have decided that you are the a-hole. All right, I'm getting all the a-hole. Um, I'm going to... I'm going to say it could go either way, but what I'm going to say is the, like, forcing your daughter, I'm going to say, yeah, but we'll see. I also think, though, like, she is 17. She's not 18. I think it's different after 18. I think at 18, if you were doing this, I would, like, be so pissed off at you. But, like, 17, you know, I'm trying to think me at 17. Mine wouldn't have allowed me to go. So I'm going to say not the a-hole, actually. I'm going to say not the a-hole. Because mine wouldn't have let me go at 17. So if I can't have it, you can't have it. <laughs> my 35 male family have this tradition of reuniting at my aunt's for a week in July. We are supposed to go next week, but my daughter, 17 female, is not happy about it. Her boyfriend of three years... Whoa. Is going on a trip with his family at the same uh, moment and invited her along. His parents are okay with it, but not me. I told my daughter she couldn't because of the family reunion. She tried to argue that I, it would make no difference whether or not she was there because she's the youngest and always bored. Okay, here's what I'm going to say. As someone who was always the youngest in the family, we were left out of family events. We were sat on our own table by ourselves. We were ignored by adults. We were not a part of the adult table. We were not allowed to play the adult board games. We were not allowed to enjoy, obviously, the amazing drinks, the alcohol, the, the adults were having, the alcoholic drinks, because obviously we were literally children. I'm talking about, like, being really young here. Um, so we would have, like, water. So there was literally just us coming around and having to be around all our family and drink water. So all I'm going to say is I'm actually sympathizing now with the 17-year-old because as always the youngest of overall families, well, actually, my cousin, I hate her, hate my cousin. Well, I, I, I actually, me and my cousins have no relationship. Talk about family drama. We have no relationship. Me and my aunt have no relationship. So anyway, but she was younger than me. Um, and we would be left out. We would be left out because everyone, my brothers were a couple of years older. So they would get to fucking sit at the adult table. My, you know, cousins were a lot older. So it was me and, you know, the one who was younger than me. And we would be on our own. So I, I'm sympathizing with her that when you're the youngest and you're at these things, you are literally there because they didn't get a babysitter. I was a floor baby, someone said. So I'm actually sympathizing with the daughter, and I'm going to say, not the a-hole. Or, you are the a-hole. Her boyfriend of three years invited, blah, blah, blah. Parents are fine with it. Um, she tried to argue that it would make no difference if she was there because she's the youngest and always bored. And she's valid for that. I said it didn't matter and she was coming either way and and or staying at home. Ugh, that's such a parent moment. You're either coming or you're not going and you're staying at home. She told me it wasn't fair of her to try force her to do something she didn't want and laugh for her rim. We had she's also 17. We had this conversation three days ago and she hasn't talked to me since. I've tried, but she shuts me down every time. Yes, girl boss. Girl boss. Girl boss. My wife doesn't mind her going with her boyfriend and his family, but I think she's a bit biased because she never liked my family. Okay, okay. You're the a-hole, and here's why. Your wife doesn't like your family, and your daughter feels left out by your family. So yes, you are the a-hole, because clearly your wife and daughter are agreeing with something to do with your family. You're the a-hole. I hope the daughter snuck away to the trip. I hope the mother and the daughter went with the boyfriend's family. You're the a- See? Look how your opinion can just change on it. You're the a-hole. What are their replies? You're the a-hole. 
all you're doing is increasing the likelihood of reduced uh, contact with her when you're older. Yup. Um... I'm just scrolling through to see an interesting one. Am I the a-hole for refusing to attend my friend's destination wedding? What do we think? Put in our predictions. Put in our predictions. Overwhelming. The jury have decided, ladies and gentlemen, the muckers have decided that you are not the a-hole. That you are not the father. My 23 female, so they're 23 and female, friend... Sarah, 25 and female, a little bit older, and I have been close friends since childhood. Okay, so I'm, I assume that this is going to be an important um, factor. I, I assume this is going to be an important factor. Um, we've shared many memories and experiences together, and I consider her like a sister. Recently, Sarah got engaged to her long-term partner, Mark, 28 male, and they began planning a destination wedding at a luxurious resort. Okay, I feel like we're being set up here. A luxurious resort in a tropical paradise. Okay, the, the wording here is important. Obviously, this is very expensive. So I'm going to say not the a-hole because this is being set up that this is already very expensive. When, Sa uh, when Sarah first announced the destination, I was excited for her and congratulated her. However, as the wedding details unfolded, I realized attending the wedding would be a significant financial burden. On You're not the a-hole. And I really, really, really don't like destination weddings for this purpose. It's like assuming that your friends and family have the time and have the money. Sarah's the a-hole, not you. Sarah is the a-hole. When Sarah first announced it, I was excited for her. And then it was becoming such a financial burden for me. We don't even need to read more, but I do want to. The cost of travel and accommodation and other expenses are literally eating into my savings and disturb my budget for the foreseeable future. You're not the a-hole. You don't need to describe yourself, but I want to hear what happened. I work a stable job and can afford my everyday expenses comfortably, but splurging on a, like, you know what I mean? It's not even a vacation you necessarily want. You don't get to choose where you're going. Splurging on an extravagant destination wedding just isn't feasible for me at this point in my life, nor did you ask for it. Moreover, I have, I think if you're going to do a destination wedding, you should either pay for everyone or elope. Stop putting pressure. I remember when someone in my family had a destination wedding and a lot of the family, including my family, couldn't afford to go to it. And it caused such a big fight within our huge family that is one of the main reasons that we still have drama in our family and the wedding was in 2017 or something like that i am so against destination weddings because they are so problematic if you're not catering towards your crowd And, like, more so than, like, money, my nana and granda had to go to this, like, destination wedding. And, you know, they're old. Like, I mean, they're, you know, doing well and stuff. But, I mean, damn, both of those bitches are old as fuck. You know what I mean? And they're not necessarily in, in the best health to be traveling. And they had to, you know, do that. And they had to spend so much money into their, like, retirement fund and stuff. It's like, I'm just so against destination weddings. And if you're going to do them, don't have the expectation that, like, everyone can go to them or should go to them because that's not the case. That is not the case at all. Um, I have financial goals such as having a down payment for a house and I need to prioritize that. When Sarah asked if I would be attending, I expressed my genuine happiness for her but explained that my financial, you know, constraints um, are intense and I, you know, regretfully declined. Wait, they regretfully declined? I assured her that I would be there in spirit <laughs> and would celebrate with them during the reception back home. So what's the problem? You're going to be there for the reception back home? You're going to you're going to celebrate it in some form. It seems so superficial if you're just going to be like, I need you there at the actual ceremony. That seems so superficial to me. Really? Like, that's what matters most. That's what matters most. 
Sarah didn't take my refusal well and accused me of not caring enough about our friendship to make an effort. Okay, now we're just doing the most. Now we're doing the most. She argued that if I truly valued our friendship, oh, here we go, I would find a way to be present for her on her special day. Motherfucker, you spend the money! Sarah! Fork up the money! She pointed out that all our friends are making sacrifices to attend, and it hurt her that I wasn't doing the same. Boo hoo! Boo! Bonk, 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 tomatoes, tomatoes. Seriously, I tried to explain my position, um, you know, saying that it wasn't about not caring, but rather about being responsible with my finances. Sarah remained upset and distant, making me feel like a terrible friend. Now I'm conflicted, wondering if I made the right decision. Well, you can't do it! You would make yourself, like, fucked money-wise! But I don't want to put myself in a difficult financial situation for a one-day event. Am I the a-hole? This is so sad that people are, like, willingly wanting to, like, put themselves in debt out of not wanting to upset their friend. This is so annoying. This person is not the a-hole. Sarah is the a-hole. This isn't even, like, everyone sucks. This is Sarah is the a-hole. Let me take a loan out so I can go to my friend's wedding. Yeah. Jesus Christ. All right. We'll do this one underneath. Am I the a-hole for being honest with my girlfriend about her weight gain? Um, I'm gonna say you're the a-hole. I'm gonna be honest. Let me get a mortgage out to go to your wedding. Yeah, not a down payment for a house, a down payment for your all expenses not paid for wedding. All right, the jury of the muckers have decided that you are the a-hole. Let's read it. She and I are both 25. We've been dating since October. In December, I have no perception of time. How long ago was October? Ugh, I love October. You know what I love more than October? September. It's my birthday month. You're in the in-between of, ugh, I'm getting so happy thinking of September. Do you remember? You have the most amazing time in between summer and, like, cold weather weather is like unpredictably predictable things are beautiful i love it and the month ends on my birthday what more could you ask for what more could you ask for i love i'm a libra i love september because in september without judgment i can start my christmas prep oh i'm getting so happy thinking about september i love september I love, love, love. I love September, but uni stress starts in September. Here's the thing. Fun fact. My least favorite month in the entire year was September until I left school. Whenever I was in school, September was my least favorite month of the entire year because it was when we went back to school. It was whenever I felt most depressed. It was whenever I, there was nothing good about it to me. It, it resembled going back to school and summer ending. Now, in my state of unemployed, no career, no, no no job, no college, no skill, September, bliss, bliss, bliss. I love it. Let me quickly, sorry, now that I'm on this topic, the best months of the year, in my opinion, sorry, let me derail a second here. Number one. The best month of the entire year is Bonnie snorting May. May. And the reason is June can be too hot, April can be too cold, May can be just right. May is the best month of the year. Things start getting beautiful. You're getting out of that, like, start of your depression. Love it. Second best month of the year. September. Third. June. Fourth. So this is really important to me, actually. Can someone... I'll just write it down myself. How many months in the year are there? 12. Okay, this is my ranking. Number one, June. 
Okay, so we June, September. Oh no. May, June, September. Oh my god. Sorry, as you can tell, it's like 3 a.m. May, September, June. Let me look at my calendar. Hmm. Fucking hate January. Fucking hate February even more. March. You don't really exist to me. April. Eh. Ooh. October. No, actually. August. No. Hmm. Number four. <sighs> Oof. This is really personal. May, September, June. August. Then. October. Then. What do we have left? So we have April. July. April. June, February, March, April, June, no, we have July, sorry, I know this, this means a lot to me, actually, November and December, okay, December makes me feel so depressed, and I love Christmas, but Christmas can only save me so much in December, December's on my really low ranking, November's pretty good. You know, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say... July next. Then I'm going to say April. Then I'm going to say... No. Yeah, November. Then after that. Then... Ooh, what do we have left? We have December, January, February, March. Fuck. I actually want to... Hmm. You know what I'm going to do? We're going to do December, January, February. I just think February, there's nothing exciting. Okay, so this is my ranking. The best month of the entire year. I'm actually going to tweet this out. I would love opinions on this. I'm reading them in chat, but I would just love opinions of this. You put my life on top. The months of the year ranked, in my opinion. And please just know, I put so much thought and care into this decision. I hope people know I actually mean that. I mean, I really thought about that. All right, let me tweet that out. The months of the year ranked, in my opinion, and please just know how much I just... No, I put so much thought and care into this. Okay, so here's the ranking. Let me know. May, September, June, August, October, July, April, November, December, January, February. I think January can have its moment. For me, January sometimes can feel therapeutic. And other times it make I left out March. Holy shit, that's so embarrassing. I've already tweeted it. Fuck. Okay. Where did I put March? March is so irrelevant. I'm going to put March in between January and February. Fuck, I need to tweet my tweet again. March is the second from the last. All right, let me tweet this again. Months of the year ranked, and I put so much thought and care into this. I want opinions. This is from best to worst. Okay, so here's the, the ranking, and I'll do it quick because I fucked that up. May, September, June, August, October, July, April, November, December, January, March, February. What do we think? What do we think? I think that's right. Yes, May is first, yeah. And I will not be silenced. 
I will not be silenced. Okay, well. All right, back to this one. She and I, <laughs> this all started because I read the month October. <laughs> She and I are both 25. We began dating since October. In December, she moved in with a really good friend of ours, or of her, sorry, 26 female. The friend smokes, smoke weed every day. Um, she's an adult. Weed is legal in our state. I don't care. Mm, something tells me E.T. Something tells me E.T. When I started noticing, though, is more and more often when I'd invite my GF over, we'd meet up. She'd be clearly high. Smoke weed every day. While not my favorite thing, I decided to just roll with it. I don't know if that was a pun, but if it was, brilliant. It made for some very interesting conversations. <laughs> um, what I also noticed is when she would get high, she'd come over, is she'd be starving. Uh, I feel her on that. I feel her on that. I feel her on that. I'm talking Taco Bell. I'm talking pizza. I'm talking Burger King. I'm I'm trying to think like in that mindset. Sorry, I'm in such a good mood that like I'm like now after ranking the months of the year. What is my go to if hypothetically I ever had munchies? Okay, I need salted popcorn and I also need to be simultaneously eating it with Sawyer Patch Kids. Or salt and vinegar Pringles with Sawyer Patch Kids extreme. The more extreme the flavor of the Sawyer Patch Kids, because you can buy the extreme ones, the more it's going to be like, I. it's the more, like, three of them babies and it, it, like, almost kills me. You know what I mean? Like, the flavor is so intense. Now, another thing is ordering a pizza, which is a given, right? I have not in so long. This is like, I'm like living for it now, but like I haven't in so long. Pizza, but not necessarily the pizza. The pizza needs to be roasting hot. What I'm more interested in is the garlic and herb dip from Domino's more specifically. It's not that I'm focused on the pizza. Oh, I have cat hair right here. It's not that I'm focused on the the extra pepperoni pizza. But I'm more so <laughs> us just us just feeding into like going against him. You're the a hole to us. Dipping it by the bucket in the garlic and herb dip. That is what I'm talking about. Now, also eating something really, really, really hot, and then immediately going in with. A Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Immediately coming in right after with something freezing cold. Life altering. I'm trying to think of what what's my favorite. Um, cookie dough. Night. I'm trying to think of another thing. I could I could go on, but I'm trying to think. Ah, oh, Lunchables. Don't get me started. Don't get me started. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like the Lunchables. On a, on a on a normal day, I want a Lunchable. These little Lunchables, the ham and cheese Lunchables. Oh, bitch! Don't get me started. Don't get me a review. And welcome to SnackTube. Uh, today I have got an item that is an absolute classic in this country. Um, um, in the amount of is this a mukbang? No, I'm not. Should have had a juice box for this. Mm. <laughs> Happy son. It's just very, very plain cheese. Why is he eating it on its own? This is just about yeah. Oh, I can't deal with it. I can't deal with the smacking. 
can't deal with it. Um, Launchables. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Just a lot of crisps. Adam, I know this is controversial, but I feel like uh, Lunchables are just shitty cheese and crackers. No, they are. They are, completely. I agree with you, babe. They are. Cheese strings? No. See, you've lost me at cheese strings because the texture really bothers me. But the cheese strings, no. Baby bells. Mmm. <laughs> yummy. Um, stuff like granola that I can literally just, like, keep eating. Love it. Flaming hot Cheetos. Flaming hot Cheetos. Nutella from the, from the jar. Don't get me started. Don't get me started. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to take a Sawyer Patch Kid and dunk it in Nutella. <laughs> we're gonna eat that shit whole. We're not gonna chew it. We're just gonna swallow it. And what we're going to do right after that is we're going to open the Oreos. <laughs> we're going to dunk the Oreo in Nutella and then put the Nutella <laughs> and then put the Nutella in the bowl of popcorn and it's going to pick up like three. By the way, I like I'm seeing people be like, oh, Adam's high. I am not high right now. I've been awake for a very long time. That's why my eyes look like this. They also look like this on a normal day. We're going to take that Nutella that's on the Oreo, put it in the popcorn. Like four bits of popcorn are going to stick to the Oreo. <laughs> Someone said, everybody's so creative. <laughs> it's so good. Please stop the hate and judgment. Now, what we're going to do after we've had a little appetizer of all of that... <laughs> We're going to go to the freezer and we're going to see that there is a jacket potato, a frozen jacket potato. We're going to cook that. Right. And we're going to put the biggest amount of butter on that. Let that, you know, someone said there's more people literally think I'm high right now. Can I, for anyone who's watching this on YouTube and be like, oh, I am. I have been live, by the way, like nonstop for like many, many, many hours. That is like is like factually wrong we're gonna put a lot of butter on that jacket potato right and you know what we're gonna do after that we're gonna go back to the pringles crush them up put that in the jacket potato You remember the salt and vinegar Pringles we had? We're going to crush that up and put that over the jack of potato. Adam, have you done this before? If I'm talking about these foods, I've tried them before. This is literally things I've ate before. A jack of potato is a baked potato, yeah. Right? And now, last... What we're going to have for a little bit of like a palate cleanse. We're going to take our hot mama pickle that we have in the plastic wrapping. We're going to drink the juice. It's going to upset our stomach. We're then going to pat down the pickle. We are then going to add on top of hot mama pickle. Yeah, it's like a movie in my head, someone said. So what we're going to do after that is... We're going to wet the pickle. We are going to take the salt and vinegar crisps, crush them up more, put them on that, cut the pickle up into little slices like this. This is my favorite. 
put it in the air fryer. They'll dry up. They'll be crispy. You have just made crispy pickles. Don't knock it until you try it. Don't knock it until you try it. This is giving the spaghetti breakfast from the movie Elf. Do not knock it until you try it. Then you dip the pickle in the wrench. No, you know what I do at that stage? Of red sauce. Getting all that shit out there. Of the, you know, the bottle. That shit. That much red sauce. So good. <laughs> writing this down. For, I thought that was going to say writing this down to try it, but it was writing this down for my therapist. <laughs> all right. Anyway, back to this. Am I the a-hole? Um, oh, you know, like, actually, one last thing that I really, really, really enjoy doing, but I've done this many times on YouTube, so this isn't that shocking to people, and this was always weird to people. Um, Tabasco, or hot sauce, like, habanero Tabasco, Tabasco hot sauce, right? You put it in your Coke, yes, you know, you know! Especially... An ice cold Coke. Oh, fuck. I need to try this tonight. I'm going to go to McDonald's after my stream and I'm going to get four fucking Diet Cokes and I'm going to do this. I did this nonstop for like two months and it altered my life unbelievably. You get a Diet Coke or you get a Coke. I prefer it in Diet Coke because I feel like Coke, the flavors are like a little bit too much um, for the hot sauce. Ice cold. A lot of ice cubes are needed, babe of hot sauce in it. Stir it around. Mm-mm-mm-mm. <laughs> Someone said stop with the sound effects. It is so life-changing. I can't even, like, the thought of it, no. It's like you drink your Coke and you get, like, <laughs> sorry, this, I need to stop with the sound effects. And it, like, you drink it and, like, a little bit of, like, ooh, hits your throat. And then you go in for more. Don't knock it until you try it. Don't do it. Don't do it. All right, back to this. I'm 100% on the girlfriend's side. I want to hang out with her. What I've noticed is she would come around high and she'd um, be starving me too, girl. Um, so she'd want food delivered or she'd want to hit the grocery store nearby and stock up. In seven months, she's gone from thin to fairly chubby. When she's not high, her weight worries her. She feels like it's sad that she used to play tennis, but now can't do that much running. She's been trying to find out why she's gained weight, and I've heard everything from everyone puts on weight in the spring to maybe I overdo it on the water... I told her it's the result of her smoking. She was bewildered, and I pointed out that it's obvious that why uh, that's what's happening. She smokes, eats a bunch of junk food, doesn't work it off, rinse, and repeat. She said I was way off in my assessment and told me to shut up. Okay, here's my thing. If... <sighs> this is something that bothers me. This is the paragraph that bothers me, right? When she's not high, her weight worries her, and she feels um, like she can't play tennis, and then whenever she's high, she doesn't care about it. Um, without diagnosing her, I have been through similar things by myself where you're able to have that distraction of it, and sometimes the only time you'll eat is if you're distracted in some sort of way, right? And... You're trying to use against her that when she's not high, she's worried about her weight, but when she's high, she doesn't worry about it. But are you realizing that probably the only time she's eating, even if it's too much by your standard, is when she's high? And there's different ways of going and approaching it rather than putting it on a Reddit thread? I am going to say that you are the a-hole. I'm going to say that you're the a-hole. And here's the thing. What he's saying about, like, you know, saying about her gaining the weight because she's, you know, sad she can't do much running and that's his response. You can go about that in a practical, 
respectful way if she's coming to you saying i don't understand why i'm gaining weight i don't understand why i can't run anymore there's ways of having that conversation in a respectful way that shows that you actually care about her and being sympathetic rather than doing this we'll do one more all right we'll read this one for the last one Am I the a-hole for making my neighbor's kids cry because I humiliated them? What do we think? What are the council thinking? What are the council thinking today? <laughs> not the a-hole. Fuck them kids. I'm getting a lot of not the a-hole and you're the a-hole. So the jury of the muckers are undecided today. They are undecided, queen. For context, I, female 18... Oh, oh, I thought this was going to be like a 40, 50 year old. You know what? Nah, fuck them kids. Nah. I thought it was an adult. Like, I know 18 is an adult, but like, I thought it was like grown. For context, I, female 18. Okay, here's what I predict it's going to be. That the kids are doing something and the parents aren't reprimanding them, so the teenager has to humiliate them. And then they cried. I, female 18, live with my two siblings, female 22, male 24. Recently, new people moved in right next to us and they have kids. They were a bit loud, which was a bit annoying, but they were kids and kids do that. I didn't really have a problem with them until they recently started ding- You know what's so crazy? Like, 18-year-olds have problems now and come to Reddit exposing them. Whenever I had problems with 18 at 18 years old, I just fucking cried myself to sleep. The new age of the media is terrifying. I didn't really have a problem with it until they started ding-dong ditching us. Ugh, I loved my days of ding-dong ditching. Did anyone play it in here? Anyone play that game? I used to slay at that game until one day whenever I was like seven years old. Was I seven? I was either I was seven years old, seven or eight years old. Me and my friend at the time, who was like crazy. He was like, he was like deranged. He had a very hard upbringing um and he was a very 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 troubled person um and he was like one of my like friends at the time and he was one of the members of the friend group right um and he was like my crazy friend like anytime I was with him he would be like at like age eight like smoking cigarettes and um I remember there were, like, a couple times where, like, I went over to his house. He lived right next door to me. And, like, I watched as his mother, like, did, dr like, it was crazy. Um, it was, and you know what's so great? You know the only reason I'm speaking about it like this? Um, he's a really great guy now. And he lives a really, really, really good life. He has an amazing job. He's in, like, a really good relationship. I see him on Facebook. I haven't spoken to him in many, many, many years. Um, he, like, completely turned his life around. He, like, is doing really, really, really well for himself, from what I've heard. So that's the only reason I'm kind of speaking like this. Um, but anyway, yeah, he was crazy. Um, and he would always ding-dong ditch with me. He was the one who taught me to do it. And one night, we were ding-dong ditching at one of my friend at the time's, Caitlin's house. And she had, like, a little bit of a walk down a hill to get to her house. Then you had to go up the hill. Um, and we both ran down to Ding Dong Ditch on her door, and he banged so loud on the door that his fist went through the glass on the door of the, like, front door, and he immediately pulled his arm out, blood all upright, runs away. I stand in, like, shock he's gone, the door opens, and I get blamed for smashing the door, and the woman of who owned the house, oh, who was my friend Caitlin's mom, such a sweet lady too, um, she walked me down to my house, like, grabbing me, and, and he was nowhere to be seen, and she, like, boom, 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 on our door. My mom opens the door. I've never been so scared in my life. And she tells my mom what happened. Like, your son broke the, like, our glass door. And I was dying to be like, in that moment, I was like, 
see if I was like me not, I'd be like, bitch, how did I break your fucking glass door and I have no, I'm not bleeding at all. What did I fucking do? Oh, I could have thrown a rock or something. Actually, never mind. That doesn't, I'm even still now, I'm not making a good argument. Um, but, um, oh my God. And I was in so much trouble. I was grinded for like the longest time of my entire life. And it wasn't even me. Um, like when did Ding Dong Lichen go from dun 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 to boom? He was, but he obviously, you know, had his own things and he would like literally just have like moments of like huge violence, but I didn't know that that was what he was going to do. Did my mom ever find out that it wasn't me? I don't think so. I didn't even bother telling her. I was like, you know what? It is what it is. Um, so I was always say, how did I get to that? I was talking about ding dong ditching. Um, and he was crazy. Oh my God. I have, can I tell you some stories about this specific era of my life whenever I was eight? It was like, we lived in the, like a really, 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 like the area was and the like everyone in the neighborhood was a character anyway this guy so I was friends with him for I think like I was friends with him for like a year max before like my parents stepped in and like never allowed me to see him again and the only reason was because um his mom presented herself as like a really nice you know and then there was like a lot of shit that happened um there's a lot that I'm missing out but just whatever um however this guy was crazy so another story that sticks out about him to me is he was just the sneakiest little fuck you ever meet and we were so was, we were both like eight or I was like seven he was like eight um he one day was like we're, we're going and we're doing something and he walked like 20 minutes down one of the streets and down another street and down a cul-de-sac and was like, come, we're going to uh, hop the fence. And I was like, and I remember I couldn't hop the fence. And I felt so uncool because he had brought like two other friends with him. And they hopped the fence of this someone's house. And it was huge. And I felt, I remember feeling so embarrassed that I couldn't hop the fence. Because like I wasn't hopping fences. Um, and it took me so long to hop the fence. Um, and we hopped the fence into this random garden. And I stood in awe as he had memorized someone's garden and started literally just grabbing from their um pond tadpoles like this motherfucker this crazy motherfucker knew that this house had tadpoles and frogs was by the hand was grabbing them and like putting them in his pocket and I remember he had brought like a diet coke bottle and was putting them in the diet coke like not in the diet like it was um empty like there wasn't whatever but he was putting them in you know just like having the house whatever and he hopped the fence again and I remember that moment was whenever I was like even at like seven years old I was like oh my god like he is going to get me in trouble and I remember I went home and I, I didn't do anything that day. Like, I literally just watched in awe. I remember I immediately walked home and I told my mom and dad what had happened. And they never allowed me to hang out with him again. Which, obviously, he was crazy. He was crazy. He was really, really, really crazy. Um, I just have, like, that time period of my life, I... And I was like seven, eight. It's like when I have my most like formative memories of my entire life. It was crazy. He was crazy. Um. Anyway, there's that. Let's get back to this. How do I keep going on these tangents? Um. Someone's like, and now he's like a car insurance person or something. Yeah, like having like a human job after that being like. Uh, anyway, um, so they were ding-dong ditching, and they were literally kicking the door, and it was like they were trying to impersonate the FBI. They hang out in, in front of our house and do it every 10 to 20 minutes. Okay, that's invasive. That's annoying, even when you're that young. Keep in mind, they kick hard. My sister was going to call the police in a fit of rage, but I told her no, because talking to their parents or calling the police might make it worse. I don't know the kid's situation at home. Oh my god, that was literally what we were just talking about. 
Um, confronting the, imagine the being like this at 18, Jesus, a lot of fucking respect. Confronting the parents might make it worse for them, but they kept doing it more often and harder. They are literally dents and scuffs on the door, and I don't even know how that's possible because the kids look like 10, and I'm seriously getting annoyed along with my siblings. They clearly don't see the security cameras. Does this person live with just their siblings, or do they have any, like, parental figures? Because are the parental figures not annoyed, or is it just the siblings? I'm not aware. Um... I'm getting annoyed. Uh, they clearly don't see the security camera right in front of the door, so I know their intelligence is lacking, so I'm not going to yell at them. So I wrote a sign in front of the door, kindly asking them to stop because my siblings work from home and it's extremely distracting. But it keeps happening. They rip the sign up and spit on it. So I can't take it anymore. I slip on some socks and slippers and go next door to talk to the parents. The mom said it's not that big of a deal. My door wasn't seriously damaged. Ugh. It tells you everything you need to know. And especially new neighbors, and that they were just kids trying to have fun. And if it's that distracting, I should put on some headphones. But my last straw is that when these kids mess with my package outside the door and shake it and throw the box against the stairs, I snap and decide to take screenshots of the security footage and of the little menaces. I make a poster with their faces on it, the damage they've done, and photo evidence of them being menaces. I type out, neighbors be on the lookout, local doorstep gremlins may terrorize your front door, which I find funny at the time. I'm gonna be honest, that's not funny. Like, this person isn't the a-hole, but that's also not funny. Like, I would have done a sign that was like, kids are doing this rather than being like, little gremlins terrorizing your front door. It's, But I'm trying to be sympathetic to the fact that this is an 18-year-old being cringe, so I'm gonna be sympathetic. Um, I My neighbors find it hilarious because those kids have been doing it to them. And they've confronted the parents, and the parents did nothing. But today I got a giant knock on the door, and it wasn't the little snot-nosed kids. This is like a book. Um, but the mom, she called me a B-word and an A-hole for humiliating her kids. She said that her kids were crying and now traumatized to go outside. I'm smiling. She yells at me and drops pieces of the ripped-up poster on my doormat and walks away. Am I the A-hole, or do the kids have it coming? Not the A-hole, and also, what an amazing introduction to the street. Welcome, you neighbors! Hi! Seriously, welcome to the street. Welcome to the street. <laughs> now that I hear the full story, like, what do you mean? Hi, neighbor. I can't. I can't. All right, well, I appreciate you watching this, and if you want any more, let me know.